Well, President Trump is set to face another busy day with world leaders tomorrow. Here now is Ambassador James Jeffrey, former U.S. Ambassador to Iraq and Turkey. Ambassador, first of all, what you see happening in Hamburg, uh, a lot of people sa said to uh, Angela Merkel when she said she was going to use Hamburg as, as the place for the, as the venue for this meeting, that's not a good place because that's where a lot of radicals are based. It's between Amsterdam and Copenhagen. The, the, the radical uh, contingent of the protest movement in Europe is really based there. Do you think she did it knowing that? Uh, she knew Hamburg would be a problem, but I've spent nine years in Germany, and this is an endemic underlying problem of German post-war society. It cannot deal with violent protesters if they claim any political cause. It has embarrassed her. It has cast a pall over this meeting. And in many respects, it has played to Donald Trump. Remember the last time he was in Europe uh, for the meeting with uh, the European Union and the G7? NATO. Uh, they attacked him uh, for being American, for having attitudes they didn't like. Right. This time, the Europeans look weak. Well, let's talk about America first because it's that phrase that kind of embodies what they don't like about Donald Trump in many ways. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you abandon your allies, though, and it seems that some European leaders are beginning to get that. That is, Angela Merkel's sort of uh, immediate rejection of that, not only the actual phrase, but the symbol behind the phrase or the, the actions behind the phrase was perhaps a little overwrought. Absolutely. Germany, again, is special. Merkel is a friend of America's, but she's facing an election with a uh, challenger from the left, so she has to be careful how close she uh, comes to Donald Trump. But the French president is trying to work with America, as obviously is the British prime minister. Yeah. And look at the uh, uh, 12 countries that met in Poland with President Trump. Right. That was really a, uh, a huge success. Oh, for the, the Eastern president. Europeans love him, clearly. But it's interesting, you mentioned the French president, because at first, Everybody thought, oh, the French, they're, they're going to hate Donald Trump more than anybody. Now, new, the new French President Macron apparently has warmed up to Donald Trump. They have a, a new relationship. I understand that French jets are going to be accompanying uh, U.S. fighters uh, as they go over the skies of Syria. And uh, the French President, this may seem like window dressing, but it's interesting. He invited Donald Trump to celebrate Bastille Day, which is July 14th, and he's going. No. At the end of the day, while there are differences over climate and trade, uh, and trade in particular is important, America's key role in the world is to run a global security, collective right. security uh, regime. Donald Trump is signing up to that. He did a deal uh, just today with the Russians over Syria. He's raised Ukraine. He stressed very strongly in Poland his support for NATO. And he very wisely said, not just with words, but with actions. And yeah. you've got thousands of U.S. troops pouring into Eastern Europe over the past year. Uh, this is all good news, and people know they need us in a very uncertain time. Well, and, and there's that, that new energy deal with Eastern Europe, uh, which could be take away the, the threatening factor that, that uh, Russia has held over the Eastern Europeans particularly. I want to move on to China, though, because uh, President Trump is expected to meet with China's Xi Jinping tomorrow at the G20 summit. Uh, I, I got to ask you about trade. We talked about trade with energy. Uh, there's also the question of, of China increasing its trade rather dramatically with North Korea at exactly the time that they claimed they were going to cut back on that trade, a 40 percent increase in the first six months of this year. How does Trump deal with that? Uh, this is a learning process for him as it was for his three predecessors. He's learning faster, I think, and the, partially because the threat is greater with an intercontinental ballistic missile now uh, in the hands of the North Koreans. Essentially, China is not a country that worries about a collapse of North Korea and all these other things uh, experts supposedly talk about. China thinks North Korea is just great to put America under pressure. And China has no interest in uh, pressuring North Korea to stand down on mm -hmm. its nuclear weapons programs. That's the underlying problem. Yeah. By the way, there was, a, there was kind of a mini summit today at the concert uh, with Beethoven's Ninth Symphony playing in the mm -hmm. background. You had, you had President Trump right behind him. You had the president of China, Xi. And right next to Melania, you had the South Korean President Moon. So they were all kind of... Sometimes at these conferences, one of the good things about these conferences is you have these little mini-meetings in which people get deals done, no? 
Absolutely. And uh, you make progress both in the main meetings and then you follow up off to the side at cocktails, off to the side at uh, uh, cultural right. events. Uh, this is all good that this is happening and the way it's happening, minus the protests. Ambassador James Jeffrey, great to see you. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Please come again.